to extend our appreciation to Marisa and her staff for a wonderful job. Let's extend our appreciation to all of the teachers who have been here and are coming and are still here. And let's give our big appreciation to the grounds staff and also the kitchen staff who are doing such a wonderful job. I really appreciate all of you who um, came up to me in the last couple of days and expressed your um, condolences for the loss of my father, who passed away uh, about two weeks ago at age 90. And he had no particular sickness. And he um, more or less passed away in his sleep. And more or less, his body just started to quiet down. And he gradually, gradually, gradually started to meditate and went up into the spiritual world. So thank you all very much. And I'd like to acknowledge his commitment, his effort to macrobiotics. He was kind of behind the scenes for most of my efforts over the past 40 or more years, quietly supporting. And he understood very well the importance of macrobiotics in our dream for the world. Okay? So again, thank you all very much, right? Um, as Marisa said, our topic tonight is the next 20 years, okay? So now we're at 2014 already. Some of us can't believe it quite yet, right? And, okay. So we have in this 21st century a number of milestones coming up. One is the year 2036, and then the next is the year 2102. Okay. So the year 2036 is essentially the um, center of a spiral of human evolution that began actually millions of years ago when our ancient ancestors first started to eat grain and stood up and started to have brain development, started to see the whole universe. Okay. And that spiral, which has gone on, most of it unrecorded, okay, is now coming to a tipping point. And that will occur according to Mitra's prediction in the year 2036. <coughs> then there's another cycle also, a little bit after that, that is the cycle of the North Sky, the Earth's wobbling motion, which produces a great cycle above the North Pole. So if I may, I'd like to hand out some materials for you. Can somebody pass these around? Yeah, thank you. Okay. Great, thank you. So this first image shows you how the Earth is actually like a spinning top. And right, as we know, the top is kind of spinning on its axis. Okay? And then also doing this, kind of going around. Do you remember as a kid you used to play with the top? And that going around motion is called wobble, a wobbling motion. Okay? <laughs> And this motion is actually hard to detect in our day-to-day -day lives. It's very slow from our perspective. But it actually takes about 25,000 years for one complete wobble, okay? More precisely, 25,800 years, okay? And in ancient times, this cycle was known and understood and was called the Great Year Cycle. Great year. The Greeks actually named it the Great Year. Okay. Can everybody understand that image, what's going on here from this first page? Okay. 25,000 years for one complete wobbling notion. It's actually called the precession, precession of the equinox, okay? by astronomers. 
So if you extend a line out from the North Pole, now don't forget, the Earth's axis is tilted. This is the reason for our seasons, and this is the reason for this great year. Tilted at 23.5 degrees off the due north axis, right? Can you see that, 23 degrees? So if you extend a line out from the Earth's axis out into space, you'll see that that line describes a gigantic circle, okay? So you can see that circle depicted here and here in the lower illustration. And like our solar year, this cycle is divided into yin and yang, brightness and darkness, okay? And that this distinction is centered around two stars which appear over the North Pole, roughly 13,000 years apart. One is the star Vega in the constellation Lyra, and the other is the star Polaris okay, in the small dipper, or small bear constellation. Okay. So this giant circle is being described in the sky. Okay. And it has a profound effect on human destiny, human civilization. So if you see the second page, this shows that circle over the north sky. Two versions of it. Okay. So what this essentially means, as we can see here also, two, no, not two, but various constellations and stars will appear pretty much over the North Pole in the course of this cycle, okay? So does anybody know what our current North Star is, which of these two? Polaris, right? So if you look on this chart, you'll see it says today, right? And Polaris is practically over the North Pole. And if you look completely opposite to that, 14,000 AD, okay? Vega, can you see the star Vega? Will be over the North Pole. Meanwhile, various other constellations will appear, okay? All right, everybody can see this, right? So. Vega was here about 13,000 years ago. Polaris is coming in the year 2102. Okay. Okay, sorry, this thing is... All right. Now, we divide this cycle into light and darkness. If you look, on the right side. Can you see like a, like a belt here? Can you see this? Can you see this? This is the next arm of our Milky Way galaxy in which millions of stars are located. So as you can see, roughly 2,000 years from now, the North Pole will point directly into that spiral arm. And you can see here the pictures of the galaxy that has spiral arms, okay? And we're located about two-thirds of the way up. What does this mean? This means a tremendous influx of energy to the planet, okay? So essentially, we can say this is the period of brightness and energy. Whereas opposite to that period, when we point away from the gal galactic arm, this is the period of darkness, okay, and diminished energy, okay? Sorry? Phone set? No? Okay. So what does this mean, okay? If you like, we can call this part night, right? This is night. And this is day. 
Or we can also say, this is the winter. This is spring and summer, okay? Each season being about, what, 6,000 years, right? Isn't it? Okay. So our Earth is something like a huge magnetic electric conductor. And you know where the most high charge of energy comes into our Earth? What place? What location? You know? Coming in actually at the North Pole, okay? okay. Something like energy spiraling in. Also spiraling into the South Pole. And these two energies actually collide deep inside and create this highly charged magnetic core, which is spinning at a different speed than the surface of the Earth. And this is made of magnetic metals, like iron and others, right? So it generates a magnetic field out towards the surface of the Earth. We can compare this to our human body. We have this central line of energy running deep inside the body, connecting heaven and earth. That energy is entering our North Pole, which is where? Our North Pole. The spiral on the top of the heaven. So have you seen like a newborn baby? And you see what? We call this what? Like the cowlick or spiral. Yeah, okay? This is where that energy enters and charges the entire body with energy. The Earth is the same thing. However, we are a little bit more complicated than the Earth. The Earth has one centrally charged core. We have seven. And you know what we call those in the case of our human body? Those seven highly charged centers located deep in the body. These are the chakras, right? So the Earth actually has one chakra. And radiating up from that chakra are the Earth's meridians. Just like we have a more complicated system of meridians. Okay? So in our human body, how many main meridians do we have? You know? How many? When you study Shiatsu or Oriental Medicine, you'll, you'll learn how many? Twelve. Twelve main ones, right? And roughly 365 main points. Okay. And those meridians radiate up towards the surface along invisible lines. Okay. Connecting with our entire internal body. Okay. In the case of the Earth, these meridians radiate out. And can you imagine what they create? Highly charged lines. You know? What are they? What geological? Those are created by human <laughs> logic. Before that, more big mountain ranges, which we can see on this globe, are actually running in the middle of the ocean also, right? Pacific and Atlantic as well as like in America, we're actually along one of those meridians here in the Berkshires. Do you know what that is? We call that line of mountains. Stretches all the way down to uh, Georgia, right? Appalachian. Appalachian Mountain, right? Then we have the Rockies. Then we have the Sierra Nevada. And then the Pacific Coastal Range. These are all the Earth's the meridians, okay? okay. And these meridians are highly charged energy lines which project divisions continuously subdividing. Something like these patterns. Let's pass these around. Everyone take a look. This is actually the pattern of the universe. Yeah, please go. These are ferns that I picked up on the way up here. All right. Who can identify this universal pattern? which is found throughout the universe, including the Earth, including our human body. Sorry? Very good. So-called fractal.
fractal means the main line of energy divides always into two. And in macrobiotics, what do we call those two? Opposite energies. Yin and yang, right? And then what do you think yin and yang do? They do what, as you can see? Again divide, right? And then what happens after that? Again divide. Again divide, right? Again divide. So that pattern, fractal pattern, which is found from the smallest uh, atoms up to the largest galaxies, is universal and is all yin and yang. Okay? So in the case of our Earth, those meridians divide into smaller lines, which also divide and continuously divide. The smaller lines, as somebody mentioned, are called ley lines, right? And highly charged, dividing and dividing. <coughs> until actually the Earth itself, all of the Earth itself is connected, okay? So during this period, during this period in which the Earth's pole is being charged by the Milky Way directly, something like plugging in to an electric socket, the energy coming into the pole becomes highly charged. And that energy then distributes out like a grid across the entire planet. So what is it that we produce from the Earth? We produce what? We could do what? How do we? Food in the form of plants, right? So during this period, which we're entering again, the food becomes very highly energized. So much so that it doesn't require much work for it to grow. Plus the effects are much more highly charged. So we start to receive from our brown rice and our barley and our vegetables and our zucchini, right? This incredibly high charge of energy. And the whole notion that we have to go out and sweat and toil to earn our daily bread becomes totally obsolete. Okay. So what do you think when that period was here, by the way, 13,000 years or more ago, what was that period referred to mythologically? Age of what? Age of paradise, right? Or Eden. Because not only was the food supply more or less guaranteed by the universe and very highly energized, but each of us or each person directly was charging that energy, as we mentioned, right, through this uh, crown chakra, right? Can you see? And that was in turn charging all of our mental and physical functions as it ran down the main core, energy core. So directly charging, plus charging through our food. Right? So what do you think with this high current of energy coming directly in? What happens to our mental capacity? So they say the average person is using what percentage? Five. That's all? Yes. Ten. Einstein was using what percentage? Three. Twelve, right? So average becomes 25. Okay. Can you imagine? Also, by the way, the food is so highly charged that the lifespan increases. Average lifespan, do you know what it is in, during this period? 76 or something. 120 years. Oh, doing that. Our modern lifespan is considerably shorter, right? Because our food quality is diminished, right? So long life highly charged the energy, highly charged spirituality also. Okay? So they say during that period, the you don't have to all the time speak to communicate. How do we how do people communicate with their high 
mental capacity, you know? Like mind-to-mind -mind communication, right? Isn't it? So called telepathy. Becomes commonplace. So guys, be careful, okay? <laughs> So this era is actually coming. And every day, actually, we're getting closer and closer and closer. And this era was here before 13,000 years ago. There are at least 250 the creation stories that talk about this ancient time. Do you know that? In every culture, the Mayan has a the Maya culture. Aztec culture, ancient Celtic culture. Did you know? Ancient Chinese calendar. Many of these ancient calendars and, and myth, creation myths, we're talking about this, and they're found all over the world. Okay? The age of paradise. How did that age end? It came to an end. There are also at least several hundred myths and legends describing the same ending. By what medium? Water. A great flood. Okay. Several hundred ancient legends describe a giant flood. In fact, during this time, some legends say there were, the flood was so great that there were several giant continents, one in the Atlantic and the other in the Pacific, that sunk. Have you heard of Atlantis? Atlantis, right? This was in the Atlantic. And the other was Lemuria, or Mu, that's in the Pacific. Does anybody know what caused that giant flood? It must have been some catastrophe of enormous proportions. Yes. You know, like the top, right? After a while, it starts to wind down, and then what does it do? It flips, right? It starts having a different axis of rotation. So that very well could have been the cause of this giant flood, which was powerful enough to sink these huge continents and completely destroy this ancient civilization. And no traces remain. Or do some traces remain? Have you heard recently about this supposed crystal pyramid, several times larger than the Egyptian pyramids, found in the Caribbean? Have you heard this? You believe it? <laughs> no? Okay. Some people are saying that is a remnant of Atlantis. Atlantis had pyramids. Ancient pyramids existed during this period. And the modern pyramids, like Egypt, Mexico, right? Yucatan, they are relics or copies of those much more ancient pyramids. Do you know what the purpose of pyramids was? They were what? Energy generating structures. And often they were placed on tops of mountains to channel energy into the valleys to make agriculture more productive. Okay? Pyramids, right? Okay. So if we faced, we are, by the way, we're the survivors of that. We were very, our ancestors were the survivors, okay? So if we faced, if these legends are correct, destruction by water, giant flood, 12 to 13,000 years ago, what's the opposite type of destruction we are facing today? Here. Fire. Destruction by fire. Good. Yin and yang, right? Yang and yin. Okay. So what does this mean, destruction by fire? Okay. 
because, right, this was the period, the last 12,000 years was the period of darkness and low energy. Humanity, to make balance, turned to increasingly intense forms of fire or energy. So think about 5,000 years ago. What were they using? What kind of energy? Fire. Wood, right? Charcoal, isn't it? And then in the 1700s, started to harness what kind of energy? What concentrate? Like coal, right? And steam. And then in the 1800s, more concentrated energy. What was that? Oil. Like petroleum, right? Oil, right? Okay? And in the meantime, technology spread all over the planet, animated by fire and energy. How about in the 20th century? What was the discovery? Electricity and nuclear energy, right? Which is the most concentrated. So as you can see, as we progressed more and more, the type of fire has become more and more intense. Okay? There's no denying that. Okay? 